Hello, I'm Chris Torrance. Welcome to the first episode of the Assembly Lines video podcast, part of the Soft Talk Apple project. Today I'd like to talk about the Merlin Macro Assembler and how to use it. Many of the examples in today's video will be taken from the new book, Assembly Lines, the complete book, which just came out. This is a book that contains all of Roger Wagner's articles from Soft Talk magazine about assembly language programming. The Merlin Macro Assembler lets you write, assemble, and run 6502 assembly language on the Apple II computer. Okay, the first thing we'll do is put in the Merlin Assembler disk, and we'll also put in a blank disk where we can save our programs. The Merlin Macro Assembler makes it easy to assemble and write your code for the 6502. Once the program starts, you'll be presented with a menu of choices. The first thing we want to do is switch the drive to drive 2 to use our program disk. We'll hit the D key to do that. Then we can hit C to catalog to make sure that this is indeed our data disk and not the Merlin Macro Assembler disk. Once we're back to the main menu, we can actually start to create a new program by hitting E for Enter, Editor, or Assembler. Other things we could do from the main menu are load or save source, append to an existing file, read or write a text file, and save object code. So if we hit E, we'll go into the editor. Once we're in the editor, we can now add or edit code. To start a new program, you can just say A for add. Once you're here, you can see that you're now on line one. So the first thing we'll do is add some comments. If I hit Control P, I'll get a line of asterisks. Anything starting with an asterisk in the first character is a comment. We'll hit Return to get to line two. Then we'll hit one space and hit Control P again. When we do this, you can see that it actually puts an asterisk at the beginning and the end of the line. We can now type in a comment for example, again, we can hit return to get to the next line. It doesn't matter where you hit return, you don't have to go to the end. Finally, we'll hit control P to get another line of asterisks. Now here is our first line of the real code. What we'll do is tell the assembler to put our code at a certain spot in memory called the origin. You can see that what I did is I hit the space bar then typed the three-letter mnemonic for the assembly code. So for example, now we'll type OBJ to tell it where to assemble the code. I hit the spacebar again to get to the next field, which is the address, and I'll put in my address. Next, we want to define a constant that we can use later in the program. To do this, we'll put a label in the first field. We'll call it bell, spacebar, and we'll say this equals the address FBDD. This is where the bell subroutine is for the Apple II. Now we'll start our main program. If we want, we could leave a blank line or type an asterisk to get to the next line. Okay, now we'll start our program. We'll have a label, we'll just call it start, and what we'll do is just jump to our bell subroutine. Then the next and final line will just be the end of the program. Here we'll just do an RTS. If I wanted to, I could actually put a comment at the end by hitting the space key twice and say something like end. Once I'm done with the program, I just hit return to get out of append mode. I can list the program and it shows me what I've typed. One more thing we might want to add, if we actually assembled this now, we would get a lot of assembly output at the end telling about the symbol table, which is sometimes distracting. So to add a new line of code, I can just say A for append, and you can see that it starts in line 10. Here we'll add the pseudo op code, LST for list, and tell it to turn it off. Okay, now we're ready to assemble our program. I can type ASM for assemble, 
Okay, just type no. You don't need to edit the source code after you type assemble. And you can see that it assembled the program. Okay, it said that it was four bytes long and there were zero errors. So, how do we run our program? Well, there's two ways. We could either save it right now to disk and run it from the file, or since we're using the original Merlin assembler, we can actually run it straight from within the editor. If I type mon for monitor, I'll go into the editor, and our program should have been assembled at address 300. And you can see at 300, there's our JSR, FBDD, and our RTS. So now I can just type 300G for go, and you can hear the beep. So it worked. To get out of the monitor and back to the editor, you just hit Control C and return. Now we're back at the main menu. So if we wanted to, we could actually save our program. So I'll type save source, I'll hit S, and I'll give it a name, say test bell, hit return. And then what I'll do after I've saved the source code is I'll save the actual object code. I'll hit O to do that. And it asks me, do you want to give it the same name? I'll hit Y for yes. And now it will save it as test bell. When it saved the source file, it actually appended a .s to the file name so that it didn't conflict with the object code. So let's hit Q for quit. And you can see at the top it says to re-enter Merlin, type A-S-S-E-M. So let's look at our program. I'll type catalog, and we should see that our test bell program is now at the end of the list. And if I wanted to, I could B run it. And there's our bell. Now, if we want to go back to the Merlin macro assembler to continue our program, we just type ASSEM. We're back here at the main menu. We can hit E for enter editor. I can hit L for list. And there's our program, and we can continue editing the code right where we left off. Thanks for watching.